Jeremiah Morgan to kick for Apprentice. It's another soggy Saturday here in the Northeast, but the rain is holding up for now as we get set for the first ever meeting between the builders from the Apprentice School and the Monroe College Mustangs. Hello, everybody, and happy college football Saturday. Grant Del Vecchio, glad to be with you live from atop Joseph F. Fasina Field as we get underway, Raphael McCoy on the return for Monroe. He's past the 30, and he shoved out of bounds beyond the 40-yard line where the Monroe offense will take over for the first time this afternoon. Afternoon, The Mustangs 4-2 and two overall on the season. Their two losses both coming to nationally ranked opponents in back-to-back -back weeks against Georgia Military Academy and Lackawanna College. Last week, they snapped that two-game losing streak in a win against Lewisburg College. Quarterback for Monroe, Mason Booth, the sophomore, his second year as the every-game starter for the Mustangs. In the backfield with Booth is Justin McDuffie. The handoff is to McDuffie, and he is pulled down by the leading tackler for the apprentice school, number 40. He'll be all over the field today, Chase Gaines. Pickup of two on the carry from McDuffie. Three receivers to the far side. On second and eight, it's another give to McDuffie who tries to get outside. before being taken down by Xavier Hunter and Morgan Roberts. Gain of four on the play, brings up third down and four for Monroe. Two receivers to each side. The back remains McDuffie. Hard count, and the builders held up. On third down and four, Booth looking to throw, and his pass is complete to Metazir for a Monroe first down. That's good for a Monroe College first down. Just the fourth catch all season for Dion Metazir. Sets Monroe up first down and ten from the Apprentice 38. Another handoff to McDuffie, looking for a hole, and McLuffie took a carry. big shot from Sincere Hawkins, the defensive back for the Builders, coming up to make the play. Two. two yards awarded to McDuffie on the carry. Two tight ends set for the Mustangs. Booth looking to throw. And well covered by the apprentice defense. He has to toss it out of bounds. It'll bring up third down and long. On third down, Booth will throw. Rolling to his right. Let's it fly. Catch made right around the sticks. Was he in bounds? And the official calls an incomplete pass. That's incomplete.
fourth and eight. Brings up fourth down and eight decision time for Monroe, and it looks like the offense is going to stay out there. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Empty backfield for Mason Booth on fourth down and eight. He looks to his left and throws incomplete. Pass intended for Diego LaMonica, the tight end for the Mustangs, but it is a turnover on downs and a nice start for the Apprentice School defense. This Builders team, two and four, Overall on the season, they've made the trip here to New Rochelle from Newport News, Virginia. Lost 24-21 to to Thaddeus Stevens in their game last week on another rain-soaked Saturday. It rained this morning. But has stopped since. Now the first look at the Builders' offense. Another Mason at quarterback, but this one Mason Tatum, and he hands off to Lawrence Reed, who has a big hole. The senior Reed breaking tackles. He's still up. Reed inside the 20, and he's taken down right in front of the 10-yard line. Taken down at the 12-yard line, a 52-yard carry for the senior Lawrence Reed on the first play from scrimmage for the Apprentice School offense. This time, the give is to Cameron Jackson, and he is swallowed up. By the Monroe defense, Sekou Chroma and Norris Wright involved on the tackle. The run game is the bread and butter for this apprentice school team. Two receivers stacked on each side. Jackson in the backfield. Tatum will throw to the outside, and it falls incomplete intended for Takavion Petty. Jeffrey Wilson on the coverage for Monroe. Third down and 12 for the Builders. This season, the Builders converting 43% of the time on third down. And they get the Mustangs to jump offside. That was Sekou Chroma, who's the guilty party for Monroe. Remains third down, but now a more manageable third down for Mason Tatum and this builder's offense. Cameron Jackson in the backfield with Tatum. Tatum will throw outside, and it falls incomplete. Tim Blair was the intended receiver. He's not happy with the call from the referee. And a flag came in on the play as well. We'll see what the official call is. It was the judge in the back of the end zone that threw the flag. It's an offensive pass interference call against the Builders. And Monroe is going to accept the penalty. 
head coach Kevin Pulley Jr. in his second season as head coach of the Mustangs, but he's been with the program since 2015. 15-yard 15 penalty after the offensive pass interference. Ball is now spotted at the 24-yard line. Again, this drive started with a 52-yard run from Lawrence Reed. He's not been back on the field since. Tatum will throw. Pressure coming, and he is wrapped up. First to get there was Xavier Belton. And it's fourth down. Fourth and 28, and the Builders will bring out the field goal unit. Their kicker is Jeremiah Morgan. Morgan's kick is no good. Morgan's kick, no good. And it remains 0-0 with 10.37 to play in the first quarter. A really nice job by Monroe to bend but not break after giving up the big play by the Builders. And now we'll see the Monroe offense for the second time this afternoon. Quarterback Mason Booth, previously mentioned, second year as a starter, recently took over as the number one all-time program leader with over 2,600 passing yards. This is a handoff to McDuffie. Picks up a couple on first down. And Booth is three touchdown passes away from tying the Monroe program record. He's at 24 passing touchdowns for his career. He's thrown multiple touchdowns in five of six games this season coming into this afternoon. Empty backfield for Booth on second down. Looks left. Got a man wide open. It's Jamel Stubbs, and Stubbs will score. Monroe, touchdown. A defensive lapse from the builders. Stubbs was wide open all alone. And it's 6-0 Monroe. Patrick Fisher-Butler is on for the extra point. First touchdown of the season for Jamel Stubbs, and it's now 7-0 Mustangs. A 68-yard touchdown grab for Jamel Stubbs, who had 108 total receiving yards in the six games coming into this afternoon and picked up more than half of that on one catch here. He was completely uncovered. Booth put it right on the money, and Stubbs took off. So the Mustangs draw first blood here at home. 7-0 Monroe, under 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. Fisher Butler will now send the kick deep. Back to receive for the apprentice school is Joshua Hubbard and Tim Blair. Up. 
Fisher Butler sends it deep. It's Hubbard on the return. Hubbard right up the middle. And he's taken down by number 20 from Monroe, Tony Carter, who scored a touchdown last week in the win over Lewisburg for the Mustangs defense on a fumble return touchdown. Builders come back onto the field. They got into the red zone on their first drive. But then a couple incomplete passes, an offensive pass interference call stymied their approach. They ended up missing a field goal from beyond 40 yards. Tatum completes a pass to Ricardo Corpus on first down. Corpus did not pick up many on the catch. A two-yard gain officially. Second down and eight. Three receivers to Tatum's right. It's Curtis Green in the backfield. Tatum looks right. Pass is complete. To McKeegan Pierkowski. Pierkowski taken down by Jeffrey Wilson. Gain of seven on the grab from Pierkowski. Third down and short. Builders go quickly. The give is to Green. Cuts it back. Loses the football. No call yet. And the official call is that Green was down prior to losing the football. And I believe he picked up enough for the first down. So it'll be first down apprentice. But that's something to keep an eye on. This Builders team turned the ball over five times last week in the loss to Thaddeus Stevens, including four fumbles lost. And now a timeout taken by head coach Pulley of Monroe. I'll step aside with 8.02 to play in the first quarter. Monroe leading 7-0. Down in 10 for the Builders from their own 37-yard line. Curtis Green just picked up the first down, but it's Lawrence Reed in the backfield who already has a carry for more than 50 yards on his first touch of the game. On first down, the give is to Reed, and he is wrapped up by Sekou Chroma and Datron Parker of Monroe. Reed has rushed for over 300 yards this season and is now close to 400 after that big gainer on the apprentice's first drive. He and Cameron Jackson have split carries for the most part this season. Play action run to Reed. He breaks a host of tackles before being taken down right around that first down marker. It looks like the Mustangs had him down in the backfield, but Reed able to slip away. And he's awarded a first down for his efforts. On first down, Tatum looks right, passes tipped, 
intended for to Kavion Petty. Second down and 10 for the Builders. Cameron Jackson in the backfield. He motions over to the left side of Tatum. Three receivers to that side. One on the near side. Tatum rolls out to his left and finds Pierre Kowski for another Builders first down. Second catch of the afternoon for McKeegan Pierre Kowski. Pierkowski did not play last week against Thaddeus Stevens. Came into this afternoon with five catches on the year. Has two in this opening quarter. Three first downs on this drive for the Apprentice School. Tatum over the middle, complete to Jackson, who had Narice Wright all over him and still made the catch in traffic. The Builders going tempo here. Now Tatum will look over the sideline for the play call. Second down and four from the Monroe 35. Tatum, screen pass, caught by Elijah Nichols, but then taken down immediately by Jeffrey Wilson who fought through a block and then took down Nichols as well. Great individual effort by Jeffrey Wilson. Loss of three on the play after the tackle from Wilson. It brings up third down and seven. Tatum will throw on third down over the middle and nearly intercepted. Takavion Petty lost his footing, was on the floor before the ball reached him, and then it bounces off the arms of a Monroe defender. Quite nearly a turnover there, but now the punt unit coming on for the builders. The punter is Jeremiah Morgan. Jeremiah Morgan to punt. Back deep to receive the punt for Monroe McCoy is Raphael McCoy. McCoy. The snap gets past Morgan. He's going to have to run for it. Morgan is taken down beyond midfield. Near disaster for the Builders. Morgan Just right through the hands right. of Morgan. Looks like it wasn't a terrible snap. And then Nail Johnson tackles Morgan. And it sets up the Mustangs with fantastic field position. New quarterback under center for Monroe. It's number 15, Dante Rhodes. He's seen some game action this season. Rhodes hands it off to Rashawn Reed. Listed as a wide receiver, but started in the backfield on that play. Hand off to Rashawn Reed. Gain of two on the carry from Reed. Dante Rhodes has thrown five passes this season. He's completed four of them. 
Seen game action against Community Christian and Wagner College earlier this season. His first pass attempt this afternoon is complete to Diego LaMonica, who broke a few tackles after making the catch. Pass to LaMonica. That's good for a Monroe College first down. 12-yard gain on the reception from LaMonica. Unsure of Mason Booth's status at the moment. He was the starting quarterback for Monroe. For now, it's Dante Rhodes. Rhodes calls Reed in motion. Bobbles the snap, and he's going to get taken down for a big loss. Kaysen Spates on Rhodes immediately. And we've now seen two mishandled snaps, one for each side. That'll back the Mustangs up a bit. It's second down and 16. Rhodes with Reed in the backfield. He motions him out wide. Pressure coming, Rhodes trying to escape. Makes two defenders miss, looking deep downfield. And it falls incomplete. Kristen McAdams was in the end zone and the ball sailed over his head. But how about the athleticism from Dante Rhodes? Looked like he was getting taken down for a sack for sure and did a little stop and start move to free himself up and made a decent throw, rolling to his left, trying to throw back right. It's now third down and 16. Empty backfield for Rhodes. Rhodes looking left, throwing over the middle and over the head of Metazir. Dion Metazir, who's already made a catch in this game, looks like he was open over the middle. Rhodes could not find him. It'll bring out the punt unit for the Mustangs. Patrick Fisher-Butler is not the usual punter for Monroe, but he is the punter this afternoon. He's the kicker for the Mustangs, but dealing with a couple of injuries to the two or the first two punters on the depth chart, I should say. The onus is now on Fisher Butler, and that's not a great punt. But it'll do the job as it rolls down towards the 20-yard line. Downed at the 23. And the Builders back on offense. Tatum fakes the handoff to Jackson, and the pass is complete to DeCavion Petty over the middle. Petty is the number one receiver for this Builders team. First catch of the afternoon, 19th of the season for Petty. Eighteen yard gain. Again, Petty's in motion, and again he makes the grab and picks up a bunch of yards after the catch. Back to back first downs picked up by Takavion Petty, the sophomore native of Norfolk. 16 yards this time around 
for Petty. First down and 10 for the Builders from the Monroe 42-yard line. Handoff to Jackson up the middle, barreling his way to the first down yard marker. Jayon Venerable with the tackle, but Jackson picks up a first down. Jackson rushed 20 times for 114 yards last week. Here's a little trickery from the builders. Direct snap to Jackson. The Mustangs were wise to it. Jackson carried for two. It Tatum went to his sideline like he was trying to get the play call, and the snap went to Jackson. On second down and eight, Tatum will throw. Looks right, comes back left, and he's swallowed up. Abdul Kone and Belton. Wrap up Tatum for the sack. Loss of four on the play. Tatum looked to his right, then tried to take off to the left side, but Kone got to him first. Now 1.5 sacks on the year, his fifth tackle for loss of the season. And that is how the first quarter will come to a close. Monroe leading the apprentice school 7-0 on the strength of a Jamel Stubbs touchdown grab. Second quarter about to get underway in this first ever meeting between the Monroe College Mustangs and the Apprentice School Builders. Builders two and four on the season, Monroe four and two. Tatum will throw on third down. And now he'll take off, looking for a block. Tatum took a big hit. And is stopped short of the first down marker. Norris Wright and Xavier Belton involved on the stop for Monroe. And now decision time for the Builders. It's fourth down and three. And they're going to go for it. Lawrence Reed is in the backfield with Tatum. Two receivers to each side. Tim Blair is in motion. Tatum fakes the handoff to Reed. Pass over the middle is caught by Ricardo Corpus. And Corpus is in the end zone for a Builders touchdown. The Apprentice School go play action on fourth and short. And Tatum finds Corpus on the slant route. And Corpus does the rest. 
Jeremiah Morgan will now try and tie this game at seven. And he does just that. Seven play, 77 yard drive from the Builders ends in a 25 yard touchdown catch and run from Ricardo Corpus. The junior Virginia Beach native. Third touchdown reception of the season for Corpus. Which now leads this apprentice squad. Builders will now get set for the kickoff. The Builders have moved the ball well in this first half. On their first drive, they had the big play in their very first play of the game. A Lawrence Reed carry for over 50 as Morgan will kick this back deep, and it's fielded by Rashawn Reed. Reed to the outside, breaks one tackle, still up. Reed trying to cut back inside, and he's tackled by a host of Builders. But a nice return from Reed to right around the 40-yard line. Mason Booth is back on the field for Monroe. He did not play in the most recent drive for the Mustangs. Now he's back out there with Charles Aaliyah in the backfield for the first time this afternoon. Aaliyah the leading rusher on this Monroe team coming into the afternoon. It's a fake handoff to Aaliyah. Booth will throw and he's intercepted. Down the sideline, Sincere Hawkins. Picks off Booth, the fifth interception of the season from Mason Booth. And now the momentum is firmly on the side of the Builders. Sixth interception of the season for the Apprentice School as a team. First of the season for Sincere Hawkins, who's a freshman. He's had a great rookie campaign for the Builders. And head coach Vincent Brown, who's in his sixth season with the Apprentice School, his third season as head coach. On first down, the Builders will run it to Lawrence Reed. Sekou Chroma makes the stop. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 from the Monroe 40-yard line. Tatum will throw on second down. Left side, Lawrence Reed took a big hit from Jeffrey Wilson. Wouldn't have mattered. Pass incomplete. Reed didn't even get hands on it. And it brings up third down and long. What a response this would be for the Monroe defense if they can force a three and out on the heels of the turnover. Referees, I believe, are going to swap out the ball. 
The rain has started to come down again ever so slightly here in Nourishell. It rained all morning and some overnight, so the field is definitely damp. But both of these teams played through far worse weather last weekend. Critical third down and long. Early in this first half, Tatum evades the pressure. He's got room to run. Tatum takes off and slides down inside the 20. Mason Tatum to run. And now a Monroe player is down on the field and in some pain. I'll step aside as the trainers attend to that player. It's a 24-yard pickup on third down on the scramble from Mason Tatum. 7-7 here at Joseph F. Fossina Field with 12.50 to play. The injured player for Monroe was their middle linebacker, Norris Wright. Mustangs surely hoping he's all right, one of their top tacklers on the team this season. It's first down for the Builders. Pass is complete to Tim Blair on the outside, and then he's taken down by three or four Mustangs. Again, the first down set up by Mason Tatum scrambling on third down and 10 for a 24-yard pickup. They're now back inside the red zone. They've scored a touchdown and missed a field goal in their two trips to the red zone in this first half so far. Ball at the Monroe 14-yard line. Cameron Jackson is the running back for the Builders, but Tatum will throw to the outside. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Takavion Petty. Pass incomplete, intended for Petty. Brandon Third Bish down. in on the breakup for Monroe defensively, or excuse me, 45, Devane Kushney, rather. Third down and eight for the Builders. Three receivers to the left side of Tatum. Jackson in the backfield. Ricardo Corpus, who caught the lone touchdown of the game for the Builders, all alone on the right side. Tatum looks left, and the pass is broken up. Jeffrey Wilson with some excellent defense on Pierre Kowski, but there is some laundry on the field. And it's a hold against Monroe. Automatic first down off the penalty. 
First and goal from the seven-yard line. It's a design run from Tatum, and he will walk in unscathed. The Builders take their first lead of the afternoon. It's 13-7, the apprentice school. Seventh rushing touchdown of the season for the senior quarterback for the Builders, Mason Tatum. Jeremiah Morgan on for the extra point, and it is true to give the Apprentice School a 14-7 lead. Mason Tatum doing it himself on the drive. He had the big third down pickup, and he's the one who punches it in from seven yards out for Mason Tatum. The Builders capitalize off of the Monroe turnover. Tatum for the Apprentice School. The great start in this first half. He's 9 for 14 for 85 yards and a passing touchdown. And he's also picked up 23 yards on the ground. And a rushing touchdown. Short kick received by Tony Carter. And Carter's wrapped up in front of that 30-yard line where Monroe's offense will take over. Fifth drive of this first half for Monroe. They turned it over on downs on their first drive then scored a touchdown on a 68-yard catch and run from Jamel Stubbs. And they've gone punt and interception in their most recent two drives. They start their drive this time around from the 35-yard line. Charles Aliyah offset to the right of Mason Booth. And Aaliyah is clobbered in the backfield. Loss of four on the play. Justin DePriest picks up the TFL for the Builders. And he really blew that play up from the start. On second down, Booth looking to his left, airs it out, far side, and the catch is made by Dion Metazer. And Metazer is finally wrangled down a couple yards in front of that first down marker. Booth. Lined up under center. It's a QB sneak. He's still up. We'll see where he's spotted. And he picks up the first down. That's good for a Monroe College first down. Now under 10 minutes to play in this first half. It was Monroe who struck first, but the last two scores punched in by the visiting Builders. And now a timeout taken by the Apprentice School with 9.49 to play. 14-7 to Builders.
First down and 10, Monroe. Right around midfield, they're on the 46-yard line. Empty backfield for Booth. Booth rolling to his left. The flag comes out. He picked up a couple out of bounds. We'll see if this is a holding call, and it does appear to be so. So that'll back the Mustangs up 10 yards. It remains first down, but now 20 yards to go. For Monroe, Charles Aliyah is in the backfield with Booth. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Booth looking right, throwing, complete to McCoy. McCoy makes the first defender miss and picks up maybe an extra yard or two. First grab of the afternoon for Rafael McCoy, who is the number one option or has been for Booth this season. 19th catch of the year for McCoy. Gain of seven on the McCoy grab brings up second down and 13. Again, empty backfield for Booth. He'll throw over the middle and through the hands of Metazir. Benny Nina on the coverage for the Apprentice School. Now third down and long for Monroe. Trying to draw the builders offside. Looks like Case and Spates nearly jumped, but not enough to draw a flag. Booth looking deep downfield on the near side for Stubbs. And it's just over the outstretched arms of Jamel Stubbs, who again already has a 68-yard touchdown reception in this game. Nothing doing that time, though. Number three for the builders, Xavier Hunter in coverage, and Patrick Fisher-Butler will now punt for Monroe, second punt of the opening half for the Mustangs. This time a nice punt from Fisher-Butler. It's handled well by Tim Blair. Blair breaks a tackle. And runs out of bounds in front of that 40-yard line. Around a 20-yard return from Blair. And now great field position for the visiting builders who lead 14-7 with 8.09 to play. First down and 10, the apprentice school from the 41-yard line. Fake handoff to Jackson. Tatum's going to run it himself. And a really nice tackle made by Montez Minor. He was one-on-one -on -one with Tatum and able to make the stop after Tatum gained just a few. Builders go quickly here. Three receivers to the right of Tatum. Jackson offset to his left. Quick throw to Tim Blair. And he is immediately wrapped up and taken down by Javari Jackson. Jackson, 
Jackson, who's a defensive lineman, sniffed out that quick throw and was all over Blair immediately. Montez Minor also involved on the stop for the Mustangs. Third down and long. Tatum looks to his left. Pressure comes. Belton gets hands on him, and now Tatum is taken down. He's able to pick up a few on the play, but it'll be fourth down for the Builders. And the punt unit is coming on the field. Xavier Belton, who was elected as a team captain for this game. The first to get to Tatum. Jeremiah Morgan is the punter. Raphael McCoy is the return man. High arcing punt is fielded by McCoy. Makes the first defender miss and then is wrapped up by two builders at the 20-yard line. A really strong punt from Jeremiah Morgan. McCoy lost his helmet on the return. And the Mustangs will set up shop from what looks to be the 22-yard line. Last three drives for Monroe. They picked up eight yards on five plays, resulted in a punt. They tossed an interception in their last drive, six plays. They gained just eight yards and another punt. On first down, the handoff is to Aaliyah. And Charles Aaliyah. Aaliyah the run. Adams and Gaines to stop. Picks up seven. The give is again to Aaliyah, and he picks up a first down. Aaliyah to carry. Charles Aaliyah, the redshirt sophomore native of Sugar Land, Texas. That's it's a sweet place to live, College I'd assume. <laughs> Booth. Looks to the sideline for his signals. Head coach of Monroe, Kevin Pulley, is also the offensive coordinator. Two tie down, tight end set. Handoff is to Aaliyah, and he is stuffed. And a penalty also came in. It was number 30 for the apprentice school, Morgan Roberts, who is the first to Aaliyah, but a holding penalty will set Monroe back even further. Second down and 20 for the Mustangs. Apologies, it's first down for Monroe from their own 28-yard line. Clock ticking down towards four and a half minutes in this first half. Booth will throw on first down, deep down the field. He's got a man, it's Rashawn Reed, and Reed is going to score. That's a 72-yard connection from Booth to Reed. How about that for making up the penalty yardage? Fisher Butler on for the point after to tie this up at 14. 
third touchdown of the season for Rashawn Reed, who did not have a catch last week in the win against Lewisburg College. Fisher Butler's kick is up and good. We're all tied at 14 with 4.20 to play in this first half. The Apprentice School has played well on defense in this one. They've now just given up two massive plays. One for 68 yards on the Jamel Stubbs touchdown and now a 72-yard score. Looks like it was zone coverage for the Apprentice School and Reed just snuck in between the safety and the corner. Booth put it right on the money. And that is a big time touchdown for the Mustangs. First catch of the game for Reed is the 72-yard score. Mason Booth now 5 of 11 for 170 yards and two passing touchdowns. Back deep for the apprentice school, Tim Blair and Elijah Nichols. It'll be Nichols on the return. Nichols is dragged down by Justin Draper. The apprentice school went three and out on their last drive. Chance to perhaps take another lead prior to the halftime break. 4-13 to play in the second quarter. Mason Tatum hands it off to Lawrence Reed on first down and Reed drags a couple of defenders on a nine yard pickup. Reed right now, five carries for 60, or 71 yards, rather. Tatum on the play fake, gets around Belton. He'll air it out, and it's caught. No, it's not. Petty got his hands on it, but it's broken up. He could not finish or complete the catch. Broken up by Carter. Tony Carter credited with the PBU for Monroe. Third down and one. Lawrence Reed is the back for the Builders. It is Reed, and he picks up enough for the first down. Approaching three minutes to go in the first half. It's another handoff to Reed up the middle. Reed to carry. Picks up a couple. Sekou, Chroma, and Rashid Frederick, Frederick combined for the tackle. Second down and seven. From the Apprentice 37 yard line, there's a faulty snap. Reed dives on it. And he has some words for his offensive line after the fact. We've seen them do a trick play where Tatum goes to the sideline, appears like he's trying to get a, a call from his coach, and then it's a direct snap to the running back. 
They did that with Cameron Jackson in the first quarter. This time around, though, Reed was not ready for that snap and near disaster for the Builders. And in the end, a penalty actually came out that I did not notice right off the bat. So the apprentice school's not going to lose yardage on that play. Monroe had gone offside. It's now second down and two for the builders. What a change of events, and Reed is buried. By Daytron Parker, who came through with a vengeance. Loss of two on the play brings up third down and five for the Apprentice School. Now two minutes to play in the first half. And we've got either a false start or an offsides penalty upcoming here. And it's a false start penalty against the right tackle. Tyler Lacey for the apprentice school. Looked like he was trying to get set and moved around too much. So it was second down and two. And all of a sudden now it's third down and nine. Reed is in the backfield with Tatum. Three receivers to Tatum's left. He's looking that way. Now coming back right. Tatum looking deep downfield for Pierkowski. Bodies dropping to the turf. It's a clean play on the back end, but a holding call in the backfield. Penalty is declined by Monroe. And the Builders will punt it away. 123 remaining in this opening half. McCoy to return. Morgan to punt. Jeremiah Morgan had a beautiful punt on his last attempt. McCoy is back deep to receive for Monroe. McCoy fields it at the 30-yard line, and he is taken down immediately by Logan Eastman. McCoy to return. Eastman listed as a kicker on the depth chart, and he laid the boom on that play. A minute and 16 seconds for this Monroe offense to work with, but... Both of their touchdowns came on big plays in this half. A 68-yard catch and run from Jamel Stubbs and a 72-yard reception from Rashawn Reed. Mason Booth in shotgun. Aaliyah offset to his right. Two receivers to both sides. Booth. Trying to link up with Aaliyah on the screen pass, and it's broken up by Kaysen Spates. On second down, Booth hands it off to Aaliyah. He got tripped up. Looked like he had a seam. Chase Gaines on the tackle. And Gaines is going to need to be helped off the field by the trainers. That is not a great sign 
for the apprentice school. Gainis is their leading tackler on the season, one of their leaders on defense, middle linebacker, and he is not able to put any pressure. Being carried off the field, our best wishes are with Gainis. Sixty one seconds to play. Clock now rolling under a minute. Mustangs will have to go quickly here. Booth. Two receivers to both sides. Aaliyah to his right. Builders bring pressure. Booth gets it away. Pass is complete to Rashawn Reed for the first down. He's tackled at midfield, and Coach Pulley is going to take a timeout with 32 seconds remaining on the game clock. Thirty seconds for the Mustangs to work with. All tied at fourteen. The kicker, Patrick Fisher Butler, has hit from forty seven yards this season. Still plenty of plays to go until we get there, though. There's a big gainer from Dion Metazier. Metazier having an excellent afternoon. He's got three catches in this first half. Did not have more than two catches in a game coming into this afternoon. Under 20 seconds, Booth, quick throw out to the left and another grab from Metazier, who gets out quickly. Now 15 seconds to play. Couple plays to work with. We'll see if the Mustangs take a shot to the end zone here. Two receivers to each side of Booth. Aaliyah in the backfield, and now the apprentice school will take a timeout and get their defense organized. A critical moment here to close out this first half. Game tied at 14. The apprentice school able to pick up a stop. That'll be momentum for the builders heading into the halftime break. Monroe trying to take their first lead of the game since they went up 7-0 in the first quarter. We'll see what Coach Pulley and this Monroe offense, what their game plan is with 15 seconds to work with. It's second down and four. So at least two plays to work with. You'd have to imagine they'll not likely anything over the middle of the field, although Monroe does have one more timeout to work with. Booth looks to his right, throws, and it's over the head of Raphael McCoy. Third down and four, 11 seconds now. And Booth letting McCoy know that's on him. McCoy did have a step on his defender.
With 11 seconds to play, Booth takes the snap, looks left, quick throw over the middle, caught by Rashawn Reed, taken down at the 15-yard line. And Monroe... Whistles came in. I thought Monroe was going to use a timeout. But no, it, there's a penalty that came in. A holding call against the Mustangs. And that likely puts the Mustangs outside of field goal range, so a very costly holding penalty against Monroe. That's the third holding penalty of this first half. And now a timeout on the field. Ball is spotted at the Apprentice 38-yard line. Under 10 seconds to play in the first half. Likely going to see a shot at the end zone here for Monroe. Both of their touchdowns have come on big pass plays in this first half. Three receivers stacked to the right side of Booth. Rashawn Reed is the lone receiver to Booth's left. Booth is going to air it out to the three-receiver side, and it's intercepted. And the first half will come to a close here at Joseph F. Fasina Field. Monroe and the Apprentice School all tied at 14 as we head to the halftime break for the Mustangs. Touchdowns from Jamel Stubbs and Rashawn Reed for the Apprentice School Ricardo Corpus and Mason Tatum have scored their two touchdowns. I'll step aside for the next 20 minutes or so, and we'll be back with live action in this first-ever meeting between the Mustangs and the Builders.
Welcome back live to Joseph F. Fasina Field here in New Rochelle, New York, the home field for the Monroe College Mustangs, who are currently in a battle against the builders from the Apprentice School who have made the trip from Virginia here to New York to take on Monroe. This is the first ever meeting between these two schools, all tied at 14 as we get set to start the second half, I'm Grant Del Vecchio. Very glad to be with you on this fine college football Saturday. It was raining earlier today in the morning. The rain has held up. And the Builders will receive the opening kickoff in this second half. They won the, call, the toss, rather, to start the game and deferred. Patrick Fisher Butler sends it deep and it's taken out by Tim Blair. Blair trying to get to the outside but he is tripped up by number 59 Justin Draper who's made a couple of nice plays on special teams. Take a look at the first half stats between these two teams. 12 first downs for the Apprentice School. They got most of their work done on the ground. 109 rushing yards compared to 82 passing yards. Mason Tatum, the starting quarterback for the Apprentice School, ran in a touchdown and also threw one to Ricardo Corpus. Tatum will throw to open up the third quarter on the run. It's complete to Corpus. He spins off of his first defender and picks up a first down for the Builders. Third catch of the afternoon for Ricardo Corpus. Gain of 14 on the catch and run from Corpus. Tatum now 11 for 18 passing for 96 yards. This time he hands it off to Cameron Jackson. No gain on the play, maybe half yard pickup. Sekou Chroma on the stop for Monroe. Say defensively, this Mustangs team played fairly well in the first half. One touchdown that they gave up in that first half came off of a Monroe interception, so the Builders were working with a short field. Blair goes in motion. It's another handoff to Jackson, and he is tripped up immediately by Montez Minor. We've called Miner's name a few times today he's made a couple of stops that's his third tackle gain of two on the play brings up third down and eight the builders were four for ten on third downs in the first half Tatum will throw, pressure coming, he evades it, now lets it fly, and it's perfectly dropped into the bucket of Takavion Perry. Just over the outstretched arm of Jayon Venerable, and it's another apprentice first down. Third catch of the game for Petty, pickup of 20 on the plays, now got three grabs for 55 yards. This pass is off target from Tatum. Beyond the reach of Ricardo Corpus. It'll be second down and 10. Tatum has Lawrence Reed in the backfield. Reed rushed eight times for 81 yards. 
in the first half. 9.9 yards per carry. Of course, the majority of that came on one 52-yard run he had to open up the first quarter. This time, Reed catches a pass out of the backfield but is tackled immediately by Norris Wright. Saw Norris Wright go down with an injury earlier in the first half, but Mustang surely happy to have him back out there, one of the leaders of this Monroe defense, number two in blue and gold. Another third down from the Monroe 34-yard line. Two receivers to each side of Tatum. Reed off to his right. Tatum throws right, and it's intercepted. It's Montez Miner. Miner cuts back to the middle, and Miner's going to have a pick six. A dream start to the second half for Monroe. Montez Miner intercepts Tatum and gives the Mustangs the lead. There is a flag down, but I believe it's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Referee's talking things over. I'll sh be sure to clear things up once I know for sure. So the touchdown will not count. The penalty that came in will negate the score for Monroe. Referees now stop the clock to get the chain situation sorted out. Ball is on the 24-yard line. First down and 10, Monroe after the Montez minor interception. Justin McDuffie's in the backfield with Booth. He gets the handoff and is tripped up right away by the number 56 of Chandler Perry. On second down, Booth looks to throw. He looks right, now comes back left. He's got Stubbs, and Stubbs makes the catch through traffic for a Mustangs touchdown. That's a Monroe College touchdown. The second touchdown grab of the afternoon for Jamel Stubbs, and boy, was that a beauty. Climbs the ladder and snatches it out of the air over two defenders. Fisher Butler's kick is up and good to give the Mustangs a 21 to 14 lead. So the pick six does not count, but that Stubbs catch certainly does. The Mustangs cash in on the Builders' turnover. They're up seven, their first lead since they were up 7 nothing in the first half. 11-12 left to play in the third quarter. Here today. 
And with that touchdown pass, Mason Booth has now tied the Monroe College program record for career passing touchdowns. That's his 27th career passing touchdown, his third of the afternoon. This is the second game this season that Booth has thrown for three touchdowns. His stats currently read 9 of 18 for 223 yards. He does have two interceptions, but one of those came at the very end of the first half on a Hail Mary attempt. Jamel Stubbs, though, two catches, 92 yards, and two touchdowns. Fisher Butler will now send it deep, very deep, and into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Touchback. And now the Builders' offense will come back on the field. Mason Tatum, after that last interception, has now thrown an interception in all seven games this season for the Apprentice School. Head coach Vincent Brown mentioning that turnovers have been a point of emphasis all season long for his squad, especially after last week in the loss for the Builders against Thaddeus Stevens. They turned it over five times. They played a much cleaner brand of football this afternoon prior to that. Tatum interception. On first down, the give is to Cameron Jackson, and he is swallowed up immediately by Sekou Chroma. Another handoff to Jackson. He had a hole momentarily, but the Mustangs close in on him almost immediately. Malik Matthew involved on the stop for the Mustangs. Brings up third down and five. Builders had a couple of third down conversions on their last drive. Tatum will throw on third down and it's complete over the middle to Corpus. Tackle eventually made by Logic Hudgens, but Corpus got free over the middle and Tatum put it right on the money for a builder's first down. Eighteen yard pickup by Corpus. First and ten apprentice from the forty eight yard line. Tatum will throw again. Looking left. He'll dump it down to Lawrence Reed, and Reed is going to pick up another first down for the Apprentice School. Second reception of the game for Lawrence Reed. Picks up 12 yards, does the senior from Warsaw, Virginia. Under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Jackson picks up four. Tony Carter brought Jackson down. Builders going hurry up here. Three receivers to the right of Tatum. Jackson offset to his left. Corpus all alone on the left side. And Jackson is suffocated Jackson by this Monroe defensive line. Frederick 
And after that last carry, Cameron Jackson comes up a bit hobbled, but he'll be able to walk off on his own strength. I'll step aside with 8.08 to play in the third quarter, 21-14 Monroe. Third down and five for the Apprentice School. Low snap, Tatum handles it. Getting chased out of the pocket and he is brought down for a big loss. Brandon Bish with the sack. And it's gonna force the builders into a punt attempt. 11-yard loss on the takedown from Bish. And a really nice start to this third quarter for the Monroe defense. They get the interception, and then even though the apprentice school worked their way into Monroe territory, the Mustangs close the door at the end. Morgan punts it away. Rafael McCoy back deep to receive it. McCoy... Mishandled it, but no harm done as it rolls out of bounds. The Mustangs offense will take over at their own 10-yard line. And defensively, it's been the big play that has come back to bite this builder's squad. They have really stymied the rushing attack from this Monroe team. Just 26 rushing yards total for the Mustangs in this contest, but over 230 passing yards and several big plays, a 68-yard touchdown pass, a 72-yard touchdown pass, and a 24-yard touchdown pass as well, Booth airing it out again. It's hauled in by Rashawn Reed. The builders think he may have been out of bounds. The referees are talking things over, and the call is reversed to an incomplete pass. Monroe went for it all on first down. They're backed up at the 10-yard line, and Reed made the catch, but I think he was out of bounds by the time he had secured it. And now the Mustangs and head coach Kevin Pulley are going to take a timeout. 7.06 left in the third quarter. Monroe leading 21-14. to Play resumes, second and 10, Monroe. Aaliyah tries to cut back, but is taken down by number 20 for the apprentice school, Justin DePriest, who's been active 
He's their team leader in tackles for loss this season. Aaliyah gets just one on the carry, brings up third down and long. Two receivers to Mason Booth's right. One on the near side is Dion Metazier, who with four receptions has been the most heavily targeted receiver for Monroe this afternoon. Aaliyah is to the right of Booth. Booth fires, and what a catch. It's hauled in by Metazier. It looks like he's just short of that first down yardage, but that was not an easy grab to make. Fifth catch of the game for Metazier. He has more catches this afternoon than he had all season coming into today. A very strong performance from the freshman wideout native of Florida, but Mustangs will have to punt it away. Patrick Fisher Butler again, who's the kicker for Monroe. He is not typically the punter, but he is here today. Monroe dealing with some injuries to their punters and Dante Rhodes, the quarterback for the Mustangs. Believe that's an attempted trick play that's completely snuffed out by the Builders. Certainly did not go to plan for Monroe there, and now the Builders will take over from the 13-yard line. First down and 10, Builders. After the failed trick play from Monroe. Fake handoff to Reed. Tatum rolls out to his right, looking over the middle. He's got a receiver. And it's hauled in for the touchdown. touchdown Ernest Harris, the sophomore from North Carolina. Makes the grab in traffic. A nice throw from Tatum. And now Jeremiah Morgan a chance to tie this game at 21. And Morgan does just that. A, a bit of a head-scratching trick play from the Mustangs. They're leading by seven, backed up. Their own goal line, they run a trick play on what should have likely been a routine punt, and the Builders cash in immediately. What a difference a week makes for Mason Tatum, who last week had just three completions on 16 attempts. He threw for 55 total yards last week in the loss to Thaddeus Stevens. Again, it was a bad weather game, but here this afternoon, he's 16 of 25, 64% completion percentage, that is, for 163 yards, and that was his second passing touchdown of the game. Tatum has struggled efficiency-wise. He came into this afternoon with a 37% completion rate, which is not great by any standards, but has played very well here this afternoon. Now here's Raphael McCoy on the kick return. McCoy may have been gone if not for a tackle made by number 26, Zeldin Ware. Really important tackle made by Ware there as McCoy has breakaway speed and had a lane. Monroe's offense will come back out on the field and start their possession from the 30-yard line. 5-11 left in the third quarter. 
all tied at 21. Monroe have been ineffective rushing the ball throughout this game. First down, handoff is to Aaliyah, and he rushes for no gain. And now flags are coming in. Aaliyah having some words on the ground with... Tayon Reed, who came up to make the stop. Penalty is against the apprentice school. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Ball spotted at the 42. That's an interesting spot because it should be a 15-yard penalty. Nonetheless, it'll be first down and 10 Mustangs from the 42. Metazier comes over in motion. Booth hands it off to Aaliyah, and again, Aaliyah has nowhere to go. Morgan Roberts blows up that play. Loss of two on the carry from Aaliyah. This rushing defense for the apprentice school has been exceptional today. Booth drops back and he's gonna be sacked. All out pressure applied by the apprentice school. Again, Morgan Roberts involved on the stop as well as Austin Flippin. Third down and 22 for Monroe after the sack. <clears throat> Booth, quick pass to the right side and Metazier gets a block and then takes a big hit. Again, it's Flippin who comes up to make the play for the Builders. Sixth catch of the game for Metazier. But the punt unit back on the field for Monroe. You'd have to imagine this will be punted straight away. Tim Blair is back to receive the punt for the apprentice school. A nice punt from Fisher Butler, handled by Blair. Blair's going to pick up maybe 10 yards on the return. He's past the 40-yard line. And that's where Mason Tatum and company will take over with 2.32 left in the third quarter. This game was tied 14-all at halftime. Monroe took an early lead in the third quarter on a Jamel Stubbs 24-yard touchdown grab. And then the Builders tied it up. On an Ernest Harris touchdown catch of his own. First down, it's Ricardo Corpus who makes the grab and picks up three or four. Johnson. 
Second down, play action again. It's Corpus who's all alone in the flat. And he's finally chased out of bounds by Cornelius Miller, but not before Corpus picks up the first down. First and 10, Apprentice School, Cameron Jackson fighting through the contact. He picks up a couple. Second and eight for the Builders. They're on the Monroe 40-yard line. Tatum motions Jackson to his left and Corpus over the left as well. He looks that way. Steps up in the pocket to escape some pressure. Looking to throw, but he's going to be wrapped up and dropped by Darian Lewis. No gain on the play as the clock is now continuing to tick down. Under 20 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll see if the Builders will run one more play. And it looks like they're going to be content to let the final seconds wind down here in the third quarter. Both teams add a touchdown, but this game remains tied as we head to the final 15. Let's do it. 15 minutes to decide a winner between Monroe and the Apprentice School in the first ever meeting between these two teams. The Apprentice School 2-4 and four currently on the season. Monroe flipped their record. They are 4-2. and two. Mustangs trying to win two in a row. Apprentice School trying to bounce back from a loss last week. They're is a pass over the middle intended for Ricardo Corpus that falls incomplete. Corpus made a valiant effort at that one, but the throw just a bit too low from Tatum. And that was on third down. And the punt unit will now make their way on the field after it looks like there was a bit of a Debate on the apprentice sideline. Jeremiah Morgan is the punter and the kicker as well for this builder squad. Raphael McCoy is deep to receive it. Morgan's going to throw. And it's intercepted. No, it's not nearly intercepted 
through the arms of Cornelius Miller. And we've now seen both teams try a trick play on punts. And neither have been successful. As far as throws for, from a punter go, not a bad throwing motion from Morgan. He just threw it to nobody. There was no receiver in the area for the builders. And if Miller was able to haul that in, he had some room to run. But regardless, it's a turnover on downs. You could say the idea for the apprentice school is that it, it's a punt regardless, getting rid of the of the football but now perhaps a little bit better field pos position for Monroe they'll get to work Booth motions Metazir to the right side Booth will throw on first down he bobbled the snap handles it though completes a pass to Diego LaMonica It's a five-yard gain on first down. It's a two tight end set for the Mustangs. Aaliyah directly behind. Booth, two receivers to Booth's left. The handoff is to Aaliyah. He tries to cut it back, and Monroe have just not been able to get anything going on the ground throughout this game. It's number 56, Chandler Perry, with another stop for the Builders. All of the big plays for Monroe in this game have come via pass. Booth is back to throw on third down. Stubbs hauls it in. Lost the football, though. But it rolls out of bounds. The official call is a catch and a fumble for now. And after a conversation, that will remain the call. Stubbs... Secures the first down grab. He's been an X factor for this Mustang offense. He's caught two of their three touchdowns. Got away with one there as he got stripped at the end of the play, but it ends up out of bounds. Another first down handoff to Aaliyah. This time he's got some room to run. Cuts back and picks up a first down. That's the longest carry of the game for Aaliyah. It's a 13 yard pickup for Aaliyah. The referee now. Please do not blow the whistles. Please do not blow the whistles. Thank you. Sending a bit of a PSA to the Monroe sideline. There's. Whistles being heard from the crowd and the referee letting the coaching staff of Monroe know if he keeps hearing it, it's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Mustangs. So referees are on top of things. It's a first and 10 for the Mustangs from the apprentice 23-yard line. Booth will throw. He's got Stubbs who makes the grab. And Stubbs is fighting through a strip attempt. Jai Sean Jackson trying to jar it loose. He was able to on the previous first down grab from Stubbs, but not this time around. First and 10, Monroe from the 11-yard line. Yeah, 
Approaching 12 minutes in this fourth quarter. Booth hands it off to Aaliyah right up the gut. And now back-to-back -back carries where Aaliyah has been able to do some damage on the ground. It's a pickup of six, maybe seven. Ball's now on the apprentice four yard line. Tight end comes in motion for the Mustangs. It's another handoff to Aaliyah and he runs into a wall of builders defenders. Sincere Hawkins who has an interception in this game came up from the defensive backfield to make the stop. Third down and four. Two receivers to Booth's right. One on the far side. It's Dion Metazier, and Aaliyah is in the backfield. McCoy and Stubbs are the receivers to Booth's right. Instead, he looks to the left, and Metazier makes the grab for a Monroe touchdown. Dion Metazier with his best game of the year by far. Hauls it in off the slant route. Makes it 27-21 Mustangs. Fisher Butler trying to make it a seven-point contest. And that he does. It's 28-21 Monroe. The fourth passing touchdown of the game for Mason Booth. He now stands alone in the Monroe College record books for the most touchdown passes with 28. He's already the career leader in passing yards and passing completions, and now he's got passing touchdowns to his name as well. I'll step aside with 10.45 left in the fourth quarter. There's an injured builder on the field. It's 28-21 Monroe. What a game for Dion Metazier, the freshman from Margate, Florida. Coming into this afternoon, Metazier had three catches total on the season for 24 yards and one touchdown. He's made seven grabs in this game alone, including that most recent touchdown. Elijah Nichols on the return for the Builders. He's tackled right around the 20-yard line. But Metazier has more than doubled his total receptions for the season this year and his total yardage as well. He's got seven catches for 64 yards and that touchdown. Mason Booth now 15 of 25 for 276 passing yards and those four touchdowns, which are the most he's thrown for in a game this season. Now, fellow Mason quarterback, this is one Mason Tatum of the Apprentice School, trying to lead his builders team to a response. It's a handoff on first down. Lawrence Reed does not pick up much. And a face mask 
penalty comes in against Monroe. So that will help the builder's cause. First down and 10 from the 36. It's another give to Reed. Lawrence Reed with the carry. And again, he picks up maybe one. Xavier Belton and Cornelius Miller involved on the tackle for Monroe. No gain on the play. It's second down and 10 from the 36 yard line, inside of 10 minutes left to play. Tatum will throw on second down, and a big hit laid by Norris Wright. Tatum was looking to connect with Cameron Jackson over the middle, and that'll fire up the home crowd for sure. Third down and long. Tatum rolls to his right, lets it fly. He got hit as he threw. And the pass falls incomplete, intended for Pierkowski. Jayon Venerable. On the coverage of Pierkowski. It's now fourth down and. The apprentice school will have to punt it away. Norris Wright, the difference maker on that drive. Morgan punts it away to McCoy. McCoy makes a tough grab, cuts back to the middle. McCoy breaks a few tackles. He spins, and he's taken down finally at the 35-yard line by Morgan Roberts. You see the dynamic playmaking ability, ability of Raphael McCoy on display there. We have not called his name much this afternoon. Came into today as the leading receiver for this Mustang squad, but Coach Pulley's team showing some depth and balance in the receiver core today. It's been the Jamel Stubbs and Dion Metazer show. McCoy comes in motion. It's a handoff. This time it's the first carry for Kion Barnes. Aaliyah and McDuffie have been the primary backs this season for Monroe, but Barnes has also carried it more than 25 times. Averaging 5.9 yards per carry this season, in fact, is Kion Barnes. He remains on the field. Two receivers to the left of Booth. Stubbs is the lone receiver to the near side. Booth can't connect with McCoy, who was open. And again, Booth is tapping on his chest saying, that's my bad threw it over the head of McCoy. He was working on a drag route. 8.30 left in the fourth quarter. Second down, excuse me, third down and eight now for the Mustangs.
Again, Booth back to throw, looking over the middle for LaMonica. It's off of his outstretched arm. Fortunately for Monroe, it was not intercepted off the deflection. And that is exactly what the apprentice school needed. They force a three and out for Monroe. Less than a minute comes off the clock. Patrick Fisher-Butler back out there to punt it away. It is Tim Blair operating as the return man for the Builders. Blair will not field it, and the ball rolls out right around the 23-yard line. Outside of the touchdown drive for Apprentice in this second half, they've turned it over on downs once, punted twice, and thrown an interception. Tatum looking deep down the far side. He's got him in. It's Blair, and he hauls it in. Massive gain on first down for the Builders, and they're set up now deep in Monroe territory. Forty nine yard completion from Tatum to Blair. Builders will run on first down. It's Lawrence Reed. Reed ran into a host of linemen from both teams. Gain of a few on the play, and there's an injured Mustang now down on the field. So I'll step aside with 7.33 to play in the fourth. The Apprentice School threatening in Mustang's territory, but they still trail by seven. Second down and seven, Apprentice. Approaching seven minutes left to play. Ball is on the Monroe 25-yard line. It's a design run for Tatum, and he is stopped almost immediately by Abdul Kone. Mason Tatum now 227 yards passing on the afternoon after the 49-yard connection to Tim Blair. That's the second most passing yards he's thrown for this season, most since the win against Buffalo State early in September. Tatum, another design run off the right side, and he just took a shot. It was Cornelius Miller who came up to lay the boom on Tatum, 
who won't want to be taking too many more of those hits. It's fourth down and five. And Jeremiah Morgan is on to attempt a field goal. It's a 40 yard attempt from Morgan. Hold is good. And the kick falls short. No good. No good. It remains a 28 to 21 lead for Monroe. Five thirty-five left to play in this contest. The positive for the Apprentice School is that they have completely shut down this rushing attack for Monroe, and they have all three timeouts remaining, so still plenty, plenty of time left for the visiting builders. But if Monroe are able to put points on the board on this drive, that would go a long way. Here comes Charles Aliyah who started to pick up the pace and more yardage on his past few carries. It's a pickup of about eight on first down, eight or nine. Aliyah now over 50 yards for the afternoon. To two tight out tight end set for the Mustangs. And another handoff to Aaliyah. He's able to make one cut, but that's about it. Still, that's a first down for Monroe. Four and a half minutes now. And that's a false start penalty against the Mustangs, the Builders' defensive line, making sure the referees saw the movement on the left side of the Mustangs' offensive line. That will stop the clock, and it will also back the Mustangs up a bit. Only stops the clock momentarily, though. It's now rolling towards four minutes left. Booth back to throw, goes to the flat, and it's hauled in by LaMonica. Nice grab on the run, but there's another flag down. The penalty goes against the Mustangs. Truthfully, I did not see what the call was from the referees, but it is a 15-yard penalty. Either an offensive pass interference call, potentially a chop block call as well. Regardless, the Mustangs are now backed up deep in their own territory. It's first and 30 from the 16-yard line. Yeah. 
Hand off to Aaliyah. Right up the gut. Doesn't get much. Coach Brown for the apprentice school. Going to have to start thinking about taking some of these timeouts. Four-yard pickup from Aaliyah. It's second down and 26 now. Booth gets the call from the sideline. This time he'll throw to the flat again, and LaMonica incomplete. Austin flipping on the coverage of LaMonica. That'll stop the clock with 2.52 to play. And third down and double sticks to go for Monroe. Have to keep everything in front if you're the defensive backfield for the apprentice school. They've given up big plays throughout this game. Have to be disciplined here. A stop here gives your offense the ball back. Play clock winds down to one second. Booth completes the pass to Jamel Stubbs. And Stubbs is wrapped up by three different builders, and I think a flag came in late on that play. Penalty was against Monroe, but Prentice School deny the penalty and force the punt. 2.42 to play. Fisher Butler will punt it away for Monroe. Tim Blair, who we've already seen make a couple of big plays in this one, Stands at the 35-yard line. Good punt. Caught cleanly by Blair. And Blair takes a big hit again. It's 59, Justin Draper, who's been all over the field today on special teams. Two minutes and 16 seconds for the Apprentice School to work with. In need of a touchdown to tie this game up. Three receivers to the left of Mason Tatum, who's had one of his best passing games of the season. Draws Blair in motion. Looking left, looking for Blair. It's complete. Narice Wright and Ian Brown combine for the stop on Blair who comes up hobbled and Blair is now going to limp off the field 12 yard catch and run from Blair Tatum, delayed handoff to Reed, and he runs right into Sekou Chroma, who has been a force to be reckoned with out there all season long for Monroe. And Chroma now firing up the Monroe sideline. Builders have to hurry. Tatum, back to pass. Thought about it, now he'll scramble and is able to get to the outside and out of bounds. But that play is going to be negated by a hold call 
against the Apprentice School. Flag came in late as Tatum started to take off. And that will halt their progress just a bit. Ball is now marked at the 39-yard line. 73 seconds left to play. Tatum drops back, looking over the middle. He's got Hubbard, and it's broken up. Jayon Venerable denies Joshua Hubbard of the big play. And now a timeout taken by head coach Brown and the apprentice school. A lot to talk over, of course. Two down territory. It's third down and 19 for the Builders. They trail by seven with a minute and five seconds left on the clock. The Mustang sideline trying to fire up the home crowd. It's do or die time for the Apprentice School. In their final road game of the season, they'll wrap up with three home games to close out this year. Mason Tatum back to pass. He's got to roll out of the pocket to his right. Fires and the pass is complete to his running back, Lawrence Reed. Another flag comes out. This could be a late hit penalty. Nope, it's a hold against the Builders. Back-to-back -back holding penalties, in fact, against the Apprentice School. It was third and 19 prior to that play. It'll now be third down and 29 from the Apprentice 29-yard line. Monroe trying to close it out here. This game has been back and forth the entire way. Monroe went up 7-0, then the Apprentice School took a 14-7 lead. Mustangs tied it up at 14 at the halftime break. Monroe scored first here in the second half. The Builders tied it up at 21. And then Dion Metazier gave the Mustangs the lead back. Tatum deep downfield intended for Blair, and it's intercepted, or is it? The official call is an incomplete pass. Logic Hudgens. Looks like he may have reeled it in, but the offensive player for the Apprentice School able to fight till the very end and force it to land incomplete instead. So now another sh chance for the Builders. Fourth down and 29. Have to imagine they're going to go for it. Punt it away here. They have plenty of timeouts, and there's one that they'll take, but feels like they almost need to go for it in this moment. It's 
Let's take a look at some of the overall stats in this contest to this point. Mason Tatum, the quarterback for the apprentice school, he's 20 of 34 for 239 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Lawrence Reed has had a solid day on the ground, 12 carries for 85 yards. That's an average of seven yards per carry. Ricardo Corpus is the leading receiver for the apprentice school. He's got six grabs for 74 yards and a 25-yard touchdown. On the other side for Monroe, Mason Booth has a season-high four passing touchdowns in this one, 285 yards through the air. He's 16 of 29 on his pass attempts. Charles Aliyah, 14 carries for 62 yards, 3.7 yards a clip. Jamel Stubbs has been excellent. He's got five catches for 130 yards and two touchdowns, 26 yards per catch today for Stubbs. Rashawn Reed and Dion Metazir also have touchdown grabs, but now it's the last chance for the builders. Tatum will air it out left side. And it's nearly hauled in, but broken up at the final second. Ernest Harris got his hands on it. There were three Mustangs in the area. In the end, though, it falls incomplete. And the Mustangs will take over from the 29-yard line. And that all but does it in this one. They've got a seven-point lead. They've got the ball in plus territory. The Apprentice School still has a couple of timeouts to work with. But already pretty much in range of Patrick Fisher Butler, the kicker for Monroe. The key here is to not turn the ball over for Monroe. 39 seconds left to play. Mustangs trying to win a second consecutive game after they lost two in a row to two top-ranked opponents. Booth takes a knee. Prentice School will not use their timeouts. And this game is going to come to a close. Monroe take down the apprentice school by a final score of 28 to 21. Mason Booth becomes the Monroe career leader in passing touchdowns in the process. He threw four of them today, two to Jamel Stubbs, one to Rashawn Reed, and one that proved to be the difference to Dion Metazir. That'll do it for our coverage from here at Joseph F. Fasina Field. I'm Grant Delvecchio. I'd like to thank you for tuning in this afternoon. So long and have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. Monroe takes down the Apprentice School 28-21.